Buffalo world, Mike from Newfound Past on an unusual Thursday live show. Um, yeah, I'll be packing up uh, one thing today, but um, get over here in the chat. Good morning, Dawn. Your first. Uh, yeah, I normally don't do a live show on Thursday. It bumps up against Scott, but his show is over. I waited till 10. Um, so I don't, I don't like interfering with other people's shows, but I'm going to do these on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays typically, but, uh, have a few announcements. So, so I'm going to wait till I have more people get in here, talk about some more stuff. Hopefully more people comes in. <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, thanks, Don. Hey, Michelle. Good morning. I get. To, I actually have one to ship out today. It's only one. It was a good sale, though. Uh, I'll take one if it's a real good one. <laughs> yeah. I prefer more, of course, but uh, I think the uh, algorithm is catching up finally. Good morning, Philip. I have been listing every day. I'm going to list again today. Good morning, John. Piper John. Ronnie. Good morning, Ronnie. Thanks for popping in. Morning, Gina. Marco. Candy Creek. Oh, uh, Candy, you're uh, Linda King. Okay. I'm going to write that down. Candy Creek Girls, Linda King. I remember you commenting under your, your regular name as well. I need a bigger list. Okay, got it. Pick and flipper, maniac picker, Riley boy, Tommy Bernard. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Brenda. Good morning. Uh, new name, Brenda. Welcome. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for finding us. Thank you for coming in. This is just a very informal chat. What I do with these things is I pack up the previous day sales. Uh, unfortunately I have one. I'm still getting back into the swing of things. Usually I have, you know, five to 15, but, uh, I don't really show what it is. You know, that's for my haul and sold video. Don't talk about the item, but we're just here to hang out, ask questions, talk Q and a, uh, Hey Denise. Good morning. Hope everyone had a good day. It is freaking cold and windy here in Northern Virginia. You're supposed to get some snow later, uh, on Saturday, I think Friday or Saturday. So, yeah. Hey John. Good morning, bud. Hope everything's uh, well in Cincinnati. Good morning, Ann. <clears throat> Thanks, Linda. Appreciate that. I appreciate all the help I can get. I need all the help I can get. Trust me. <laughs> Some days I feel like a wackadoodle. <laughs> I imagine Denise. Uh, my uh, Denise says uh, before we moved out here, when we lived back in Missouri, uh, my wife was still in the federal service. You know, federal work and she did a a detail in minneapolis and we loved minneapolis it was really cool uh it was really cool it was cold there but uh, it wasn't near as cold as fargo she did a detail in fargo as well and i was like you, we are not moving here ever it was so cold and i, I can deal with the cold and it was beyond my <laughs> ability to deal with it was a uh you know stuff coming out of your nose and freezing to your face cold in fargo Good morning, 36 Chevy, Chris, Manatee, good morning, Iowa, we have some family that lives in Iowa, appreciate that Iowans coming in, Brenda, Anissa, good morning, Anissa, Anissa, hey Linda, I am too, that's our, that's our plan, well, maybe not full time, but 10 years from now, I'll talk about it a little bit yesterday, I want to uh, have a, uh, I don't know, either a truck or a trailer or an RV and a trailer or something and take my thrifting on the road, go all across America. <laughs> Good morning, Dixie. How you doing? Yeah. They, like I'm, I'm telling you, Anissa, I was, I was, it was actually her last day there and I was, I'd went up there to help her. She had been there for like a month, you know, and I was still back in Missouri, but I went up there to help her come back home. And I uh, went up there and uh, was packing the car up and stuff. And I was like, this is insane. 
It is sheer insanity. Yeah, I think so too. Pick. Oh, the, yeah, I think, yeah. I look forward to it. <laughs> oh, absolutely, man. It's, yeah, I'm gonna have to pare down. Absolutely, I uh, more like pick out all my hundred dollar items and above, and just have those. And even then, I may be pushing it. <laughs> oh, I don't know, Alan. Uh, it has been kind of slow, but I think partly that's. I've heard that from a lot of people, though. I, I think my slow sales were my fault because I haven't listed until like three days ago i took like a two-week period where i didn't list but i've heard a lot of people are pretty slow so even some of the bigger youtubers and stuff have been fairly slow so i don't know it's possible i mean when eight hundred thousand people aren't getting paid it could have an effect you know my wife is one of the lucky ones she's still at work and still getting paid but uh we're very fortunate we have neighbors one right next to us that's furloughed no paycheck and it's not a good situation Pick and flipper in Lake Havasu. That's awesome. Is it nice and warm there in Arizona? <laughs> oh, that's cool, Denise. Outside the city, but close enough you can get there if you need to pretty easily. Yeah, I know Ronnie. I saw you in the Facebook chat earlier. Ronnie of Heart Pickers has been, he's a, he's a listing machine. We all need to be more like Ronnie. Oh, that's, that's not too bad. It's not necessarily warm, <laughs> pick and flipper, but uh, 60, 65 and sunny. I think most of us would take that, you know, considering right now outside, it's like 35 degrees and the wind's blowing about 20. Oh, I imagine, Brenta, you have to shrink that inventory way down. Was your philosophy like mine, just keep the smaller kind of higher priced items? You know, that's what our philosophy is going to be one day when that happens, hopefully. You know, like I said, about a decade from now. <laughs> yeah, I did, Riley Boy. I shaved. Uh, talked about that a lot yesterday. But, uh, yeah, couldn't take it anymore. Just had to get rid of it. Damn, that's, that's real cold for uh, Alabama. Dixie, that's real cold. Real cold. I grew up in Arkansas, so, you know, summers in Arkansas were brutal 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 so i don't like that either you know i don't like the extreme cold but i don't like that 100 degrees with 90 percent humidity in in arkansas either that is ugh, just awful and another thing i'm going to do today i got my microphone this is my microphone set up that i'll be installing since i got my all my furniture and my desks in place. I'm going to get this attached and done today and see how it goes. A manatee listing a pile of 1940s kids books at the moment. That's pretty cool. Kids books usually do well when I find them, you know, uh, don't find them that often. Good ones. But yeah, it can do well. Oh, that, that's smart pick and flipper. Uh, FBA on the road, that'd be awesome. Be super selective with eBay and have your FBA rolling. So that stuff, it's not in your storage. <laughs> you just ship it out. It's really smart. Good morning, Larry. How you doing this morning? Thanks, Truth. Did I have Truth down? My list is long. I got to look through. I didn't. No. Okay. Pick and flipper is Chris. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Appreciate the the pump up there, Truth. I can, like I said, I can use it. I can get, yeah, it's a swing arm, Don. It's a one attached to the desk, and I can maneuver it around and shift it and move it, and so I don't have to be set in one place. Really, you know, if you have a set microphone on the desk, I'd have to be like right here. Yeah, as I, trust me, my wife helped me with this. She's really good at organizing them. On this side, I have. Let me just get over here to the Google. Yeah, on this side, this is a deep shelf that goes this way. I have all the boxes that I use a lot, which is uh, 10 by 8 by 6 eBay box, 12 by 10 by 8 eBay box, 7 by 7 by 6 priority mail box. I use that one a lot. My regional rate A's, both A1 and A2, uh, 12 by 12 by 8 priority, 6 by 4 by 2 regular cardboard box, the uh, shoe box size priority mail box, poly mailers, uh, padded flat rates, 
and up top are all the rectangle boxes like the uh what are they the 1095 or 1045 and 1047 whatever those numbers are the rectangular self seal boxes priority boxes and on my back side i have the stuff i use less often like regional rate b one and two and um um other stuff like a uh, uh, regular flat rate boxes i don't use those an awful lot you know because of cubic and uh regional rate boxes and just other random stuff yeah try to get it arranged really well be more efficient that's the that's the theme of 2019 is efficiency okay back over here good morning 24 picker did i have you down here yes l good morning l i'll learn that eventually i promise <laughs> and larry's headed to work yeah I have to absolutely manage so you have to sift through a ton if you want to do kids books but there are some good ones out there uh the chris the pick and flipper says that if it doesn't fit under his dining storage area he doesn't buy it for you <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do right uh eli howard says what was your mvp sale of december man i had so many good sales in december um so yeah there's a lot i would have to i don't even remember i had so many uh but my sold videos you'll see it all <laughs> i had a lot of really good sales like you know 200 300 plus sales you know so good morning jameson jameson's closet you're a new one too appreciate you coming in I appreciate everyone, of course, but it's always nice to see new people that pop in the chat. Good morning, Kent. Uh, Denise, Thursday are my work from home day. That's awesome. Uh, my wife has two telework days a week as well. It's uh, hers are Monday and Tuesday. So, what we really, you know, she's eligible for retirement in 10 years, and I've talked about that. What we really like for her to be is 100% is remote work position. It's not, it's not completely unheard of in federal work, but uh, it's tough. It's tough to get one of those positions, you know, because everybody wants it. So she's hoping that in the next couple of years, she may be able to land one, though. So and if she does that, we are, I mean, the thrifting is great in this area. The thrifting is awesome in this area. I love the thrifting, but I don't like it here. <laughs> Too much traffic, too many people, too much, you know, rat race, too much, too much, too much. I don't like it. I mean, I love traveling and I don't mind big cities. I love New York City, but I just, I guess it's part of the, the Southern boy in me. I don't like the, uh, to be around it all the time, but, uh, it's just for a few years, hopefully. So let me see here. Brenda is lucky to have a basement storage area, 36 foot fifth wheel. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. It's kind of like an under the, under the fifth wheel area, kind of like a Greyhound bus. Good morning, Sean. Groove town. So in a few minutes, I'll start packing this, uh, one item, the one big cell I have up. It's a pretty big box. This one. Yeah. Glad to have any sales. Uh, how, how slow uh, eBay's been. Before I came on there, I was watching. Um, yeah, I watched a, a lot of Scott's live video, but I also popped over and watched his Walmart video about the one in Indiana. And that's pretty funny. I mean, not funny, but uh, yeah. Try to watch a little bit of everyone. So, yeah, what is everybody else going to accomplish today besides? The thumbs up <laughs> or whatever. We got 44 awesome people watching. I appreciate anyone that coming in. Yesterday, uh, yesterday was my first video after I was approved for monetization, and you know I'm still pretty much relatively a newbie at this stuff. I don't, you know, I've been doing videos since May, but all the ins and outs and nuances of uh, YouTube I haven't gotten down yet. And somebody had told me you have to after you're monetized go in and and change all your videos to where they can make money or whatever you know my first day i made 88 cents literally 88 cents but i did that but no one had told me that you have to enable super chat as well just like sean just did 
nobody told me I had to enable that thing. So uh, yesterday after the video, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but I appreciate it, Sean. You're the first one. Yep. Appreciate it big time. Like I said, I made 88 cents all of yesterday. So you've more than doubled my earnings on YouTube. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Uh, Don is picking up some auction wins over the lunch and then coming home once. Oh, that's awesome. Man, I try to buy stuff at, you know, they have most of the auctions around here online and stuff. And man, that drives up the prices. You know, the prices get crazy at auctions around here. Well, that's cool, Kent. I've heard some other people talk about that show, but I uh, haven't looked into it that much. Yeah, Denise, uh, Justin got his approval probably about a week ago or so, and he is approved. Yeah, Gina, put that 88 cents in the in the uh, 401k in the IRA account. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Oh, that's awesome, Sean. I appreciate it. And I feel special now. Good morning, EMM. How you doing? I have you down here. I don't think so. Oh, and this, that's okay. <laughs> I'll just say you're the first. But no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Hawk, my activity has picked up since yesterday. I just sold a medical device from University Sign Auction, three hundred dollar item sold, and just, that's awesome. Love the quick flips, don't you? A lot of people get down on themselves about it. something that sells in sleep. Oh, maybe I could have got more. I'm not. I'm always stoked when something uh, sells super fast. I'm like, good. Had it for just a little while, and it's out the door. Got my money. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome, Don. It's always good. That's the, and that's the, I've talked about it before. I think I miss about Missouri is the auctions because there's not a lot of, you know, resellers there where I was at. And, uh, I mean, there is, but there isn't, you know, we would go after different stuff, you know, but, uh, I always really enjoyed going to uh, these, these farm auctions are out in the middle of nowhere. There's no telling what you'll find. We found some great stuff going to very, very middle of nowhere rural auctions. L is uh, packing a FBA. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I really need to make my, I need to alter my schedule to go out and do some. Re oh my gosh, Denise. That is awesome. You guys are too good to me. I'm telling you. Too good. But anyway, yeah, I need to like, I have a schedule pretty much. I've talked about it. You know, you pretty much. <laughs> We work for ourselves, but you have to have a schedule, you know, because if you don't, it's real easy to sit on the couch and watch YouTube videos all day. But, um, oh, I know Michelle. Michelle, who are these people that pay retail prices at auction? I see it here all the time. These online auctions, I'm like, who? I mean, I kind of get it, understand it if it's kind of a unique item and you're buying it for yourself. But some of this stuff, you're like, what in the world are these people doing? Uh uh, I, Chris, you know, I just got the email about that, uh, the Amazon influencer program, and I have not looked a lot into it yet, but I'm going to, it's on my, my list, my mile long list of things to do. <laughs> Cause I'm also, I know it's far in advance, but it's, it's, we're also, we're already almost in the middle of January, but we're going to California in June for my Marine Corps reunion. And I've got, I've got the plane tickets bought, but I need to plan out everything else. Like the hotels, where we're going to be, what we're going to do. I think we're going to have time. We're going to go hit Sequoia National Forest and uh, yeah, do some other stuff. So, Yeah. But, Denise, I truly appreciate that. You, Sean and Denise are doing the super chat. You guys are – you guys have been constant supporters since early on, you know, and I greatly appreciate it. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, Sean, single consumers or just buying it for themselves, you know. And noobs, it could be. My da my dad, you know, bless his soul. He he passed away. Uh, he passed away in two thousand five. Yeah, two thousand five. Is it two thousand? No, not two thousand five. Two thousand seven. 
he was yeah 2007 he passed away in 2007 it's already been 11 years oh my gosh but uh he would go to auctions and he would he was an auction i called him auction you know he was like the auction frenzy king he was so competitive he would like pay more for something just to beat someone and i'm like dad don't be stupid like you just paid retail for that craftsman drill would you stop it <laughs> but anyway you know people do what they like to do you know so uh john's got to go to the post office that's yeah man i hate going to our post office it's always such a nut house i'm super glad i have a really good carrier yeah lots of competition sean lots of competition around here too i actually have a regular viewer that i see all the time at the, the thrift stores his name's david he comments on videos. I don't think he's ever in the live chats, but he comments on videos. He, he's he's a young guy, but man, he hustles. He hustles at it. Yeah, Ronnie, I love farm. I love my favorites are farm auctions. Like I said, very rural farm auctions and uh, industrial live auctions, not online auctions live. You know, so but it's hard to find those around here. Uh, let me see. I'm working my way through here. Sorry. Thanks, Elle. Uh, Elle's working her full-time job. Oh, that's awesome, Manatee. Uh, vintage toys. I usually, you know, I buy a lot of Tonka stuff, you know, the old-style metal trucks from the 70s, 80s, and they usually sell pretty well. You know, they're hard to ship, but, you know, people are willing to pay for shipping. I'm willing to sell it to them. Yeah, I've noticed that too, Paul. Paul says that people here are paying way over spot for silver coins. I just stay away from coins completely and have for a long time because people are insane with it. And even if most of the people, uh, what they pay, their margins are less than 5%, you know, and I just can't do that. Now, I'm not going to tie up that much money to make only 5%. Oh, thanks, Denise. Yeah, but me and my wife both are veteran Marines. I call my, you know, I was a reservist, so I, I, I call myself kind of a, a fake Marine. But my wife was a real Marine. She was active duty. She was uh, stationed in Japan, in Okinawa, Japan for most of her career. So before she was medically retired. Yeah, Sean, uh, shipping hats, you use either the eight by six by four eBay box or the 10 by six, 10 by eight by six eBay box. Put it in a poly bag or a, a cell by a cello bag plastic bag put it in the box ship it out it should be uh first class so like i said typically a lot of people say 10 by 8 by 6 box for that sean but i can fit if you turn it the right way with like the bill down at an angle you can fit it in an 8 by 6 by 4 usually so 8 by 6 by 6 will be okay as well but 8 by 6 by 4 will work good morning pick and roll did I have you down? Yeah, Steve. Steve is a uh, pick and roll. Good morning. How you doing? Oh, thank you, Kent. Man, you guys are being awesome. Awesome, awesome people. <laughs> Sean's talking about people running people up, and that happens at auction. You know, you get to know people, and uh, people will run people up on purpose. Cause they know they won't give up. I've seen that a lot of times. I appreciate all the super chats guys that Sean and Denise and Kent. I love estate. I love all thrifting and picking, but estate sales are, are awesome as well. I need to start going to them more often. I'll go to, you know, a, a few a month, but, uh, there you go. Sean, Michelle uses the 10 by eight by six, just like, a, you know, and like I said, the eight by six by four can work, but you know, it's what you have on hand too, you know. Yeah, Sean, the <laughs> numismatic value. You know, that's true. A lot of variables in coins. Coins are kind of like sports cards. There's a lot of variables. Condition, mint, uh, where it was where it was struck, all kinds of stuff. Thanks, Alan. Semper Fi to you too, buddy. Always faithful.
Uh, I've got <laughs> packing material popping out of a box back there that I shoved down this morning. Uh, Riley Boy asked, how do you ship a heavy plush that's 20 inches tall? So heavy, I'm guessing you mean over a pound. So it's one of those with like, you know, the bead type stuffing in it. Um, Hi, oh, hey, Craig. How you doing? Good. Hey, everybody, this is Craig. This is Land Shark Picker. Hey, how's it going, everybody? So uh, go subscribe to Craig if you haven't already. I know a lot of people in here have, but uh, still worth the shout. So Riley Boy was asking how to ship a heavy plush that's 20 inches tall. <laughs> I shipped a, um, uh, it was probably a bad purchase. I made marginal money on it. It was some big, I don't even know what animal it was, but it was just huge. It was one that didn't have really heavy stuffing though. I was able to, you know, compress it down and get it into a decent sized box. Good thing is it wasn't real heavy. Yeah, that's what I was about to say too. Most of the time plush isn't that heavy, but um, if it's heavier and it's going to be priority mail, just uh Get it in whatever box you can. And if you have a bag to put it in so it doesn't get like yeah. poked or ripped or anything, I would do that. I think I got it in a good size poly before I did that. That yeah. helped, you know, compress it down, the, you know, and keep it in its shape so it wouldn't. Because the thing, it's just like clothing, Sean, or who was that asked that? I forgot who asked that. But uh, people get crazy, O'Reilly boy, people get crazy with their uh, um, utility knives opening boxes. So you <laughs> just got to be careful. Yeah. Got any ship, Craig? I've got one. I listed an item yesterday. Uh, it was a little Roomba, one of the virtual walls or sensors or whatever they're called. It's a little, about the size of a pack of gum. Uh, but it oh. shouldn't be too hard to ship. A small one. Yeah, it was a 99 cent. Uh, I think I got, I think I took an offer of 35 maybe ship, uh, 35 and 399 shipping. Quick, easy flip. That's a good margin. Yeah, just listed it yesterday. I don't know if you've watched my videos or have heard anything that uh, I've kind of made a decision not to source anything until I can get a, a, a large majority of my back stock, you know, my death pile listed. Yeah, we was talking about that this morning in the in the chat, but the... it's it's been a challenge. Yeah, I imagine I can't. You know, that's like can't help. I made myself be super duper picky though when I go thrifting. Super super picky. Right. It's tough. And I'm sure we've talked before that, you know, the thrill of finding something is hard to resist. It I is. feel like I've got to get out there and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm missing something if, I, if I'm not out there. Yeah. But, you know, just take self-control. That's right. Easier said than done sometimes. Yeah, all of us have talked about that, Justin and Scott and Lonnie. It's like this is, you know, a lot of people are gambling addicts. We're, we're, we get our high off thrifting. We're thrifting addicts. Yeah. But we actually make money, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> Yeah, Grove Town. Uh, I've been. Uh, this will be my third third day without it, without sourcing. Um, and you got to be going into withdrawals. Well, it wouldn't be so bad if I didn't. You know, I take my son to school every morning, uh, drop him off between seven thirty and seven forty every morning, and it's about a ten minute drive, and I pass my two Honey Hole thrift stores on the way, both coming and going. And it's, and it's not like it's, oh, I've got to turn here and go a little ways. It's literally, I, I passed right in front of both of them. So it's, it's taking a conscious effort to say, okay, I'm not stopping. So literally the car just drives itself. It, 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 it knows the, the pattern to take. <laughs> I hear you. Like when we're on vacations, I have to, you know, we do do some thrifting stuff, but I have to force myself to stop. You know, it's like, you don't have to, you're on vacation. Go, go vacation. Don't work. <laughs> Uh, Canyon Creek girl says, ask if, uh, if, if there's a 12 step for that. Yeah. I, I've made it past the first step. I have admitted to have a problem. <laughs> uh, now step two is to take some kind of step to correct that problem. So. I don't even know what that step. I get all the step to correct that problem is you're getting your death pile listed. Right. Is that right. That, it, well, <laughs> I've kind of changed my, my philosophy. I, I, I've gotten to the point where I was sitting at that thrift store because they, they bring stuff out all day and it's usually pretty good quality and I can do pretty good in there. There's, there's very rarely a day that I don't pick at least one or two things up. And I've gotten to the point where I was spending two and three hours in there. Wow. And it, and it was consuming my time. And you know, that's time that I should be, you know, working on a YouTube video or, you know, listing, yeah. <laughs> you know, 
So I, I've made the conscious decision to try and source only on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And, you know, the two stores maybe spend an hour at each one. Yeah. And I kind of did that too. Like, you know, we pretty much do 90% of our sourcing on Sundays, Sundays only. And that's it. That's not bad. The rest of the week is for listing and packing and videos. And need to do more of the listing part, that's for sure. I've done I've done a lot of listing the past three days though. So I, I, I've done better than I was. I'm not hitting my goal yet, um, but I know that's not. I, I, I tried to jump right into it, and I set a pretty pretty lofty goal. Um, uh, I'm at I'm at about 200 listings right now, which is not enough to to support my my family full time. So I've got to get that up. But uh, um, I'm going to get to a thousand listings, and I can do that in six weeks if I list 30 items a day. Absolutely. Um, you know, first started going hardcore with this that's what i did you know i was you know 30 40 listings a day till i got to a thousand right and now i'm being super picky i you know back then i would buy stuff i could make a ten dollar profit on now i've kind of scaled that up I, you know so yeah i think that's the key once you get you know a decent set of inventory that's listed to, to up that average sales price you know per item absolutely it's just like building a business you know it's just like building any business yep Start where you can and just grow. Yeah. Let me see here. This is 21 by 19. Six. Looks like you got a lot of uh, organization done. Looks good. That's oh, good. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Big time. Uh, let me get these numbers in here. 21, 19, and six. I am strictly shipping through pirate ship now. Everyone will be happy to hear. <laughs> That's good. And you, you say you're using your business card, so you're getting cash back or something on that, right, as well? And now I don't have to empty out the PayPal account every time because, you know, pay, Pirate Ship just charges my credit card. So, yep. And this weighs eight pounds, three ounces. Yeah, that's not bad. A big item, it's like, 20 by 18 by six, eight pounds, three ounces, only $9.90. Wow. Going to New York state. Mm. Print that up. Yeah, I'm waiting on, I got the redo pretty much done. I'm waiting on um, one more piece to come in that I ordered to do my photography video set up better. I'm, I'm debating on changing my lighting. I've got the big... I don't know if you can see that. The big, large, not umbrella, but the big, large, whatever they're called. And they just take up too much room. Everything I do is out of my bedroom. Or our bedroom, I'm sorry. And uh, and I had those two. That's why I'm, I'll show it once I'm done. I have all the parts. I'm going to a ceiling mounted system. That, that's on. We're going to go with the LEDs. But Lonnie uses. What's that? Are you going to use the ones Lonnie uses, the LEDs or something similar? Uh, I don't know exactly what it uses, but they are LED panels. They're big yeah. LED panels. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm debating on that. The ceiling with rails. That way you can slide them and maneuver them. That'd be nice. Yeah. I had to order three different pieces, though. I ordered the panels separately, the uh, hangers separately. The hangers go up and down. Well, and the rails good. separately. <laughs> so, you can, so you can slide it out of your way when, it, when you don't need it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, being space constrained, you have to be as creative as you as you can, you know. Oh yeah. So, all right, getting this label printed. Oh, shoot. I mean, you got to pack up today. Just the one. Uh, yeah, it was it was an okay sale. It was a pretty high dollar item, but sales haven't picked back up yet from my two week listing hiatus. So I've definitely learned that uh, you don't need to complain about lower sales because, you know, any sale is better than none. That's right. You know? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. I'm going to change my settings here. Uh, Ronnie's in the chat says he's still trying to get to a thousand listings. He's been there, only been there once. Man, I was bumping a thousand listings before Christmas. Well, I had a thousand on one account, two hundred and fifty on the on another, and fifty on my thirty bay account, and I have a couple hundred with Amazon. But uh, my main account is down in the eight hundreds now. I mean, which is good. 
So, oh, yeah. right. good. <laughs> but, but to get to that point, you know, obviously I don't, you know, I don't want to strive to keep a thousand listings every month, you know, every, all the time, you know, the best thing is I, I could make it on 200 listings if I had an average sales price of a hundred dollars a piece. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. You know, but, but that's, you know, you can't hit home runs every time you go out sourcing, you know, yeah, I'm kind of like you, I've changed from, Oh, I'm going to have to get an anchor store now. No, and I'm fine with a thousand, but I want to get my average sales price up. Yeah. And I think, and I think it's, it's something you can't jump, you know, try to jump to too quick. And I, that may not be the right wording, but you know, you, you've got to, you, you've got to find those bread and butter items, those, you know, not really marginal profit, but those, you know, 10, 12, 15, $18, you know, sales items to, to fill up and start getting sales flowing in. So you can then start, you know, being a little more selective in what you pick up. And it sounds like that's kind of where you are. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm glad to sell all those bread and butter items, but I'm not going to replace them. <laughs> it, it just, it just gets a steady flow of, of sales coming in. That's right. You get, you know, kind of ramped up that snowball effect. Yep. For anyone that's new in the chat, you know, that's, you know, when I started out, I was buying those items. You could make a $10, $15 profit on just to ramp up inventory, but to the point now, cut that stuff off. I'll probably pa pass over 50 items every Sunday that I can make 10 or $15 on. And that's a conscious decision because I don't have the storage room either. <laughs> I don't have the storage space. But, but, you know, and you, I don't know how you are, Mike, but you know, I would probably have a difference of opinion on that. If it was an item I could pick up in bulk, you know, I would pick up, I, I've got a little item. I don't know if I could put my well, hand. Bulk could be different. These are just like one offs, you know? It's, yeah. Well, yeah. I just mean, if I could pick up an item, I could pick up 50 of them and make $10 a piece. If and it was the yeah. same item, I would definitely get that. Because yeah. Yeah. It's a, once. Yep. Yeah, if it's a widget, I can stick in a box, and when it sells, I grab it and stick stick it in a padded mailer. Absolutely, yeah, that's a no brainer. I've got a little. Um, it's a uh, satellite GPS uh, USB cable, and I, I got like a hundred of them in an auction, and get like twelve dollars a piece. It's not big money, but that's easy money though, because it's one listing, one photo, uh, and and they sell primarily to uh, like police stations. I've had several police stations buy like thirty of them. That's awesome. Good morning, John. How are you doing? Hey, How are you doing? What's up, John? Good. Uh, yeah, similar. When I, I bought, it's before I was a YouTuber, but I bought like 28 micro cassette recorders and they weren't like Sony, but they were Craig's. And um, almost all of those sold to like lawyers' offices and pathology departments. And, <laughs> you know, those things go pretty quick. Yeah, they went super quick about 100, 110 bucks a piece. Wow. Not for, three dollars a piece or something so. you know the, the the sony's the panasonic's usually do well but i, I i've had some off-brand ones i've done pretty well with as well absolutely like i said these were off-brand craig brands is what they're going yeah. hey, there's no wrong with craig hundred dollars plus a piece so what you got going on today john you got your listing challenge you yeah your um i went a little crazy i got some retail arbitrage on like some hunting jackets and hunting pants um they were about like 70 percent off nice so i got like pants and jackets i am getting like 30 some pair so now i'm just trying to get some photos and get my stocks and get these things listed because now's the time for them to sell absolutely i think all my hunting stuff i had have sold you know so how's how's the um is the hunting season wrapping down? Is it? I'm not a big hunter, so I don't know what this how the season runs. I'm not either. I have no idea. <laughs> I think it is winding down, but we're still in session. Depends on the state too. Every state has a different right. But but that stuff, that kind of stuff, probably is still going to sell during this you know, yeah. time of year, not just because it's hunting season. Absolutely. Yeah. But you can find it at reduced prices because of the season. <laughs> yeah, they're already starting to turn over. You know. Heck, I wouldn't doubt if there's like Easter stuff on the shelves and. You know, next week there'll be Fourth of July stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, a couple of the stores here, like they, as they were pulling the Christmas down, they were putting up all of the uh, Valentine's Day Valentine stuff out. Yeah, thank you. Yep, yep. I'm surprised they waited this long. Honestly, right? <laughs> I need to go start seeing if there's some ninety percent off Christmas clearance stuff. I'll pick up a few things. I really not not that I have the space, but I've seen a lot of the pre-lit Christmas trees. 
knock yeah. way down. Yeah. If someone had the space, they may be able to make some money on it, but I don't know. I've never tried that one. Yeah, they're you know they're large. I would that's the only thing that would scare me. But they you know I think they sell pretty well. They probably sell pretty well on foot marketplace or something like that. But that's something you gotta have to hold on to until you know next year or later this year, I guess. That's something I've, like I said, I was talking about my schedule earlier and I do have kind of a set schedule throughout the week, but I need to work into some, uh, where I go out and hit the clearance hill in my schedule. Yeah. In my area, there's two, I mean, not too far from me at all. There's two Walmart super centers. There's everything in Northern Virginia. You can imagine. Yeah. We got some Terminex guys showing up at some point. So I might have to jump off here and go uh tend to him if he shows up yeah i've got about i got about 20 more minutes i got a meeting at 11 o'clock but i'll hang on we're gonna go. yeah we're gonna go about 20 more minutes so i usually do about an hour so <laughs> that's cool yeah i think lonnie has something coming up doesn't he uh noon i think isn't it i don't remember the guy's name it was a, a pretty well-known person from the uk or something he was gonna be talking with yes i'm pretty oh, uh, is it here is it here malik no. No. Uh, Nick Hills? Nick, yes. Nick Hills. Yes. <laughs> I love Nick Hills and Andrea, too. They're awesome people. Yeah, I think it's I think it's supposed to be noon uh, Central Time. Cool. That would be a good show that we were talking yesterday. They've been on YouTube for a long time, and they know what they're doing. I know I, I don't have any regrets of anything I've done or anything I've do, but you know, if I would have started a YouTube channel when I first had my stores and stuff, pff, I don't know where I'd be at today. Yeah, I had some crazy a lot of stuff the the earlier. <laughs> yeah, crazy people, crazy dealers, crazy customers, crazy employees. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is, if everybody was the same, it'd be a boring world. That's right. There was only, I mean, a lot of crazy people, a lot of crazy stores, but only one time I physically threw someone out of the store. Oh yeah. Yep. He's a. It was a. He was actually one of our vendors, one of our dealers. We called him. You know. Wow. So, uh, he called my wife a liar about something. Oh God. And oh. I grabbed him by the scruff of his neck and threw his butt out the door. Awesome. <laughs> That's great, man. <laughs> Yeah, it sounds like yeah. I'm sure all three of us the same way. You you call me whatever you want. You mess with you know <laughs> anything else. Don't mess with my wife and my family. You, That's know? Right. you got it, man. You don't go there. And he called the police and said I assaulted him and stuff. And I'm like, I had a, I have a security surveillance. You know, I have footage and yeah. we <laughs> with sound. So the cops got there and I was like, let's go watch the footage and we went back to my office and watched it and they were laughing <laughs> Do you want to reconsider <laughs> i was like i apologize for my language but you know he was like um he could have actually been charged with trespassing because i told him to leave like three or four times before i threw him out right and once you tell someone to leave your property they're trespassing you know yeah. but anyway it's quite funny how'd your sales go yesterday john uh, yesterday was awesome. I, uh, yeah, it was a couple hundred dollars and I, I, my sales have been really slow lately. So I was really happy. It's nice to have those kind of days when you're trending downward, you know? Yep. It really is. I did okay. Yesterday. I think I did a hundred and yesterday. Yeah. About 190. That's great, man. Yeah. Well, getting back on the listing, you know, bandwagon, you know, that, mm -hmm. that tends to help. You list enough and list regularly enough that problem tends to handle itself. Yeah. Especially if you're listing quality items. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me see. I guess that's the third day back listing. So two days ago I listed uh 19, but one of those had a quantity of nine. So technically like 28, <laughs> but yesterday I only got like nine up. But yeah, try to get between 10 and 20 today minimum i think i got 15 uh day before yesterday and got uh, about 10 yesterday lex in the chat says she picked up 16 softball bats from 180 all new wow. what uh, lex what kind of what kind of bats were they what was the brand 
16 for 180 so that's just a hair over 10 bucks each yeah. for brand new that's pretty darn good yeah. yeah it's real good especially if they're a decent brand you know a decent model when um <clears throat> on bat you know a lot of the parts on the way from the the U triple S A stamp to the uh, is it the USA stamp now? And a lot of the parts are not allowing them to use the U triple S A bats. Yeah, those stamps are a pain in the butt. And they are. Yeah, yeah. It depends it depends on the league. Like right. we're just playing in a beer league. They hardly ever check that, man. I mean, unless unless some tiny guy jacks like four home runs, like they they usually don't check it. And I think the other team is the one that has to call it out. Like the umpires really don't care for the most part so right but 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 even i'm, I'm talking primarily on the like the youth side even then on the youth side yeah. um uh the, the other coach is the one the, the other team is the one that usually has to call it out but yeah this the stamps they they change them like every five years or so right but when they made that change you, I, I saw a pretty good heavy influx of really good you triple sa stamp bats you know show up at the thrift store because right thought they were using our areas that way you know other other areas are doing that but there's a lot of parks and a lot of places are still using the other bats yeah yeah uh 24 picker yeah usa is the is the direction from what i hear they're a lot like just wooden bats as far as pop and all that as far as sweet spot i think that's why they made that change from a safety perspective i believe mm -hmm. lex worth is a good brand um I, I, you know, softball bats are good, and I'm sure John was. I don't know how much you explained it. You can't just pick up any softball bat. It's like anything. Just because one brand is good doesn't mean you pick up one of everything that a brand produces. You know. But, yeah, you're uh, absolutely right. But at at the price point that oh, yeah. she got them at, then uh, she should be okay. I mean, yeah, I think oh, so. Yeah, I think so. It'd be one thing if they were all used. I'd have been like, eesh, but all new. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's fine. Yep. Most bats will have the model number right on the barrel and you can yep. look it up. Yep. A lot of people in the chat and stuff still work full time jobs and, and um but the people and we talk about what's the most difficult job you ever had. The most difficult job I ever had was a part time job when I refereed uh football and uh umpired softball and baseball. Oh man, I bet that was miserable. It is <laughs> thankless and it is miserable. It is, you know. <laughs> I've, I've been on both sides of that. I've coached uh, youth and high school sports, and I have a refereed or umpired, you know, in youth sports. And being a coach and being a referee, it gives you a whole new perspective on, you know, how to how to approach an umpire, how to treat an umpire, you know, all that. Yep. I mean, just treat them with respect like you would anybody else. Like, these parents just go nuts, you know what I mean? Like, right. they're trying to vicariously live through their kids. Yeah. It's like, yep. at the end of the day, it's a game. You know what I mean? Like. I don't know. Good, good luck getting them to understand that and follow that. I mean, it's right. It's crazy. I've seen some crazy stuff. I stopped doing it. it. wasn't because of the kids. It wasn't because of the coaches. It was because of the parents. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. And ninety percent of the parents you have trouble out of either as a coach or as a, a umpire have never either been a coach or been an umpire or a ref. You know, I'm like, if you think it's so bad, bring your butt out here and you do it yourself. You know. Yep, absolutely. But I've, you know, after coaching so long, I always took the approach of, you know, if, if I go out there yelling and screaming at an umpire, I've immediately put him on the defense. He's become defensive. You know, if I approach him with respect, we can sit there and talk. And, and no referee will admit it, but if <laughs> if a certain coach is a real D head, you know, is a real pain in the butt. Some calls are fifty fifty. Well, those calls aren't going to go his way. <laughs> <You know? laughs> You're supposed to be completely impartial, but we're all human, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the ones that I had the biggest, uh, and there were a couple that, that I ran to every, you know, every weekend, and uh, the ones that are, it doesn't matter what the rule is, they're going to call the way they, you know, not even an interpretation call, just a straight rule, you know. Yep. And uh, a lot of them are just hard headed, but that that is what it is, you know. Like you said, everybody's human. That's right, you know, because some penalties are obvious: a false start, holding. But you know, pass interference. Sometimes it's not so obvious. You know, <laughs> that's, a, that's a judgment call. Yeah, you know, to some respect. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to derail the conversation. No, that's that's you know, it's 
this is it's not really a working hangout, but it kind of is. But, uh, you know, I just used the time to ship and I was telling the, the chat earlier, usually I have five to 15 to ship, but they only had one. So <laughs> it was, <laughs> but I did want to come in here because I was going, uh, I'm going to start doing these mid morning, what I call pack and ship shows just on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays from here on out. And I'm doing my haul videos just like I am on Tuesdays, but I'm shifting my sold videos to Thursdays. So I have something five days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, live shows, Tuesday and Thursday, you know, pre-produced shows, Hollands and what sold. That's what, that's what I've kind of with my whole 2019 plan. That was another change I made, you know, along with my Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of sourcing, I was going to try and do a quick, if I do them every day, there should be quick, quick haul video. You know, I bring the stuff in, whatever I get and just do, you know, maybe a 10 minute haul video. That gives me something regular on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then uh, something non haulish on uh, Tuesday and Thursday. And before I threw my hat into the ring, I was like, you know, everybody does haul and solds. And I was like, maybe people want something different. They don't really. They want to see what you sold. They want to see what you got. <laughs> they want well, everybody well, to be creative. But, you know, well, I think they want to see a combination of the two. There, some people may be trying to marry up. Hey, he did a haul video and said he could get $40 for that item. If I yeah. watch this whole video, did he really get what he said he was going to get? Yeah. Right. Within reason, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's you know i had a commenter yesterday that I went off the rails about but when i when i quote prices in my haul videos that's the high price it doesn't mean i may not take an offer on that price i may but i'm pretty uh, yeah a little dime and i will stick to my guns for a while <laughs> and, and the market may not be that price for for the long term you know by the time your sales it you may have to run a sale you may you, know, you just never know you may have to do promoted listings there's a lot of variables right the uh, calls and sold videos are definitely the most informative. That's, that's where a lot of people watch the most just because um, it's it's straight information that they can use. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, it's cut and dry. It's like, this is what I got. This is what I'm going to sell it for. Or this is what I got. And this is what it sold for. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was telling the chat earlier before you guys came in, I'm going to put this up today. Yeah, yeah, sure. Nice. Myself a boom arm microphone. Oh, that's cool, man. I'm gonna put it. That's one of my chores today. With doing laundry, <laughs> enlisting. I passed up a Yeti microphone at an estate sale before I knew. I, I, I it looked at it, it looked nice, but it was it was more like twenty five dollars. This has been a year ago before I was doing any you know doing anything on YouTube. And, one of those things you look back and you're like, dang it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was just, it, it, they're, they're made nice. They look nice. They look like they're well-made. Uh, I picked it up and looked at it. I'm like, nah, I can't spend $25 on this. Just thinking just pure resale. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's like, yeah, I wish I'd have grabbed it. Yeah. You're kind of like me, though. I'll pay a little bit more if I'm going to use something myself. But, you know, still like to get a deal like this. I got on one of the Amazon, you know, Christmas deals, you know, so mm -hmm. pretty good discount. That's cool. I can't. Well, I'm going to do a separate video of when I get my. I was talking to Craig about my new photography and video setup. I'm going to do a video just of it when I get it set up. The 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 lights hung from the ceiling and all that stuff. Oh, cool! Yeah. I'm waiting on one part to come in. One vital part: the rails. <laughs> <laughs> I got the lights and the brackets, but I need the rails. I told Mike, it looks like you got a lot accomplished with this reorg. It uh, looks looking good. Oh, tons. Absolutely. And, and behind me, it still looks a little chaotic, but uh, it was, trust me, I got a lot done. <laughs> it's, it looks like organized chaos. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a lot of this is still recycling, and my recycling runs today, but it was so daggum windy, I couldn't put it out there. It had just blown crap all over the neighborhood. You know, so I have to wait till next Thursday, and hopefully it's not windy. Shannon DePadre, you're uh, new in the chat. Appreciate you coming in, Shannon. Shannon had a pirate ship order recently in New York to California with huge savings. Do you pass savings on to buyer? No. <laughs> Do you worry about savvy of our buyers wear a pirate ship? No, I don't. Because it's shipping and handling, you know, so. Yeah. I've never had one buyer message me back and say, oh, you only paid this for the shipping, but you charged me that. You know what I mean? Like. I'm, I mean, I'm honest. I don't inflate the weight. You know, if it weighs two pounds, I put two pounds. I don't try to cheat them that way. But 
Like, I don't forward on that discount. That's right. You know, I hadn't paid attention. I know on eBay, you can, when you print your label, you can tell it not to include, not that I'm trying to hide anything, but um, you can tell it not to include the cost of the shipping, right? Yes. Can you, uh, can you do, can you do that on top? Yeah, pirate ship. It's not on the label either. So. Okay. I wasn't sure. Yeah. And another thing to keep in mind, Shannon, I think your name is Shannon, uh, is that we get charged the final value right. on shipping as well. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So we have cost all over the place. So I am not, I do not feel bad about, you know, if we make a little bit off the shipping. Yeah. So. It's not just the, the cost of the postage that you got to consider. Oh, right. yeah. Tape, bubble wrap, yep. boxes, uh, bubble mailers, all that stuff. It all costs money. Your time to do it. Yep. Yeah. And absolutely. And, and if everybody watched Craigslist, Hunter Pete is unapologetic. He charges flat rates because he kind of knows what he's going to get caught. He's like, I make, it's my handling, you know. Right. It takes time to do this stuff, especially what he does, all those heavy electronics. The packing of them takes time. Yeah. It could take you 15 to 30 minutes to pack up one item. If you go, if you do it right, it does. And if you look at it, you know, I don't like everyone's different, but if you're trying to make 60 bucks an hour, 30 minutes of your time, that's 30 bucks. I guarantee yeah. you're not making 30 bucks from your shipping, but, you know, something's better than nothing. I don't know if we have any new sellers in the, uh, in the chat, but. If I have any, I can give you any advice is learn shipping. I know it's been said in a lot of videos, learn the ins and outs of shipping. It will kill you. It will absolutely destroy you, especially if you're a heavy item coast to coast. It'll, yeah. you'll go negative in a hurry. I know I made, when I first started, I made a lot of mistakes. That was probably, you know, outside of the obvious bad buys and all that, that's kind of a given that happens, but, but shipping will flat out kill you. Yeah. I learned the hard way with a lot of that stuff. And, 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 and truthfully, John, I tend to, I tend to hold on to knowledge better if I learn the hard way. Yeah. Regardless <laughs> of what it is, not just business related. Cause you remember you're like, ah, oh, I lost $30 on that thing. I better make sure I never do that again. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and we've, yeah, we talked about all that all the time, but shipping is, is probably the number one until, you know, obviously we all want to know what to sell, but shipping is the number one besides knowing what to buy and sell. Uh, yeah. I, haven't watched, I haven't watched Scott's video. He just did a, a video on shipping. It dropped, what, yesterday? I don't know if anybody's watched it. Uh, I've heard a lot of people saying it was good. Got loads of stuff. I'll probably check it out at some point. The Walmart video? No, he's got a, I think it was a shipping oh. item. I think I don't know how detailed it was or what it covered, but I've heard a lot of people saying it was good. I'll have to check that out. I've... Sorry, not trying to promote somebody else's stuff. No, but it's it, fine. Uh... We all, I try to watch everyone, but you know, there's only so much time in the day. <laughs> Scott's a good one to promote. He's a professional. Yep. Yeah. He's uh, traveled through Cincinnati a few times and we've gotten lunch and talked. He's a, trip. He's a good guy, though. I got some new uh, totes this morning for storage and I'm. Trying to label them and oh, yeah. get them all set, ready to go. I got a storage unit, but it's just a mess, and I really got to get things organized better. It really, I mean, that's why I did this whole redo, and it took me two weeks, is that my efficiency was dying because things weren't organized well enough. So. Yeah, yeah, it, it's a time killer for sure. So, yep. Well, when, when you do this, Full time, you, you've got to be a, a lot more. Because I, I, I don't know how much you all remember about me. I, I work full time, and and back in April made the transition to to doing this full time. You've definitely got to be a, a good at time management, and that's what's hurt me a lot. Is that's one area I struggle in is time management. It's time is money, you know. You're absolutely right. Yeah, that's why I like these videos. If I'm live on YouTube, this is a lot easier because I'm usually working as well. I'm packing something, I'm doing something, but those, the pre-produced videos takes a lot of time, you know? So, Oh yeah. They definitely do. So. Yeah. But I still enjoy doing it. Yeah. Trying to cut my time down on those as far as, you know, editing and, you know, obviously I'm gonna do the basic editing, but I'm not going to go for all the frills and the spinning, you know, crazy stuff and all that. Editing <laughs> is a black hole, man. And, <laughs> You can go down it and waste a lot of time, but I mean, it, it just depends on what kind of video you're making. Right. It can, 
it can help a lot, but you also don't want to spend two, three, four hours on one video. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we could literally, I mean, my wife and I both, we know how to use Adobe Premiere Pro. Mm -hmm. We can edit the crap out of some videos, but we just use iMovie. We do yeah. use iMovie. We edit, and it's fairly quick, less than, you know, usually an hour or so, and done with it. Because you can go into Premiere Pro and sit there for four hours tweaking stuff. But Right. So it's not worth it. Yep. There's a point when you start losing money and sanity and time and everything else. Absolutely. I have a few of my viewers in the chat that are are full time RVers and also, that they're full time RV RVers and are, and they flip and that's what I want to do one day. I'm like, oh, that's awesome! Maybe a decade away from doing that, but yeah, that'd be a blast. Travel across the nation, just visiting national parks and thrifting. Is it is it John that's in uh, then Scott's channel a lot? The guy that's the big Amazon seller. Lives in yeah, yeah, he does that too. Yeah, John. Yeah, because I know he does everything, but he, he has like a flag business and a bunch of other stuff as well. Right, and he's got a lot of people that are doing majority of the work for him too. So, Boy, not like to there, yeah. it's not like he's toting around inventory in the RV. No. I'm about to get out of here in a few minutes. Yep. Oh yeah, it is eleven. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, guys. Uh, but. Anyone in the chat, uh, Craig, Land Shark Picker, go subscribe to him. He put his uh, link in the chat earlier. And John, the Cincinnati Picker, uh, yeah, give those guys a subscribe if you're not. But thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm filming the sole video this afternoon, so that'll drop tomorrow. And, uh, next week, it'll change to Thursday. But thanks, Craig. Thanks, John. And we will see you guys later. Thanks for hosting, man. All right, man. Have a good day.